physics and Python and functions. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you uh, a useful example of how functions can be used to create a Python program for physics stuff. And now remember, I'm a physicist. Okay, I'm not a programmer, so I'm approaching this from a physics perspective. So I might th do things that a little aren't. If you're a programmer, you might say, oh, that was super bad. But, you know, the most important thing is to get in there and start doing stuff. So I want to start off with this idea of a projectile motion problem. So here I have a ball that it's launched from a cliff. Okay, and it goes through the air. There's no air resistance and it hits down right here. And I want to find out how far it went. So I have this launch velocity V0. It's a vector and it depends on the angle of launch cosine theta sine theta are the two components uh, the x and y components of that uh, and I'm not I'm not really focusing on projectile motion here I'm just giving you a brief thing uh, and that's why I just have this as a as a slide and keynote uh, and it starts off a distance h above the ground and I'm going to call this the origin down here and it travels distance x so the initial vector position is just 0 h 0 now here is the magic to a numerical calculation. I'm going to do this numerically even though I don't have to. Okay, I'm going to do it numerically just to make sure that you understand how this Python function would work. So I can first calculate the acceleration. Once the ball leaves the launch or whatever, its acceleration is the gravitational field. It's the same as the gravitational field which have a, a negative y component. I can use that in the definition of, average, of the acceleration to find the velocity at the end of a short time interval. So if I take a short time interval delta t and I know the acceleration, then I can take the velocity at the beginning of the time interval and use that to calculate the velocity at the end of the time interval. So this is the velocity update formula right here. That's what that is. Okay. Uh, and then I can do the same thing with position. I can use the definition of average velocity and use the velocity at the end of the time interval and the position at the beginning of the time interval to find the position at the end of the time interval. And then I just do this again. I do this as many times as I want until the ball ends up down here. And that's a numerical calculation. And this is the Euler method. It's not the, it's not the best, but it's the easiest. Okay, so I'm going to make a program that uses the Euler method to find the final position of this ball. And then... We're going to turn it into a function, and then we're going to we're going to use that function to do something fun. I think it's going to be fun. Okay, so here we are. I'm using GlowScript v Python, uh, and let's just get started. So the first thing I want to do is define. Um, yeah, I'm going to just do the the calculation. So g is vector uh, zero 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 uh, negative nine point eight zero, and I made the font a little bit bigger. Someone complained that my font size was smaller. If it's still too small, you need to let me know and I'm going to make it bigger. Okay. And I really appreciate the feedback. You guys are helping me help you. Okay. So now I want to pick uh, some other things. I need the initial velocity V0. I'm just going to put this as uh, five meters per second. I'm going to put the angle at 30 degrees. So it's 30 times pi divided by 180. And then I'm going to say, um, now I need the height. So I can, let's just say H is, how tall is my little cliff? Let's say it's 2.2 uh, meters tall. So R, the initial position, is going to be equal to um, vector 0, H0. And the initial velocity, V, is V0 times vector cosine theta sine theta 0. Now you notice here that my r0 and my v0 are just r and v. And that's because I'm going to be changing these values. So this is just the, what it starts off at. Um, so now I'm going to set a time. Time is 0. dt equals 0 0.01. I'm just picking something we can change out later. Now I'm going to do my, my loop, my calculation of breaking this into smallest time steps. So dt is my short time step. So I'm going to say while r dot y is greater than or equal to zero. So this says keep doing the loop until the ball gets back to y equals zero. And you notice it starts at, at h, right? And, and so this is important. This is a little important thing right here. So r is a vector. So r dot y is the y component of that vector. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the acceleration, which I don't need to do, a equals g. Okay. Now I'm going to update the velocity, just like I said. So v equals v plus a times dt. Now, if you haven't done this before, this is not an algebraic equal sign right there. 
this is make equal to sign. That's why it's so great that I don't have to put V0 or V1 or V2. That just changes the velocity. Now let's do the same thing for R. R equals R plus V times dt. And also, A has a negative Y component. I don't need to put negative A, okay? Because up here, A is equal to G. Now finally, I'm going to update the time. T equals T plus dt. And that's it. So then I'm going to print out time equals, just for the fun, time equals t, how long did it take? And then I want to say print x equals, this is the final x, x meters. Let's save it. I didn't save it up here. Let's see, projectile function. It's not a function yet, but it's going to be 1. Save. Okay, let's run this and see what happens. And I'm going to give you the link to this code. Don't worry about it. Time. It didn't give me X. Oh, that's why. <laughs> let's just print out R. The final R. Okay, so there you see here that the Y value is very close to zero. It actually went down below because we have a numerical calculation. But it's good enough for now. Uh, and the distance it went was 4.2 meters. Just so you know, if I change this to 0 0.001 time seconds, I get, a, I get a super tiny Y value. But I don't really need to do that. This is just for fun. Okay, so it looks like our program is working. Uh, but And what I want to do is, if I go back over here, I want to launch this at different angles and find out which angle gives me the longest range. And we could do this a lot of different ways, but I want to make this as a Python function and run it a bunch of times and just see what happens. It'll be fun. Okay, so going back to Trinket, here we are. I'm going to make a function. So I'm going to go up here and call this def. You always start a function with def for define the name, and I have to use a name that's unique. I can't use something like range because that's already built in. I can't use vector, okay? So I can, I'm going to call this p range, which is projectile range. Now, I need to say what parameters am I going to put into this function. Uh, let's make it as generic as possible. So I want the launch velocity, v0. I want the starting vector position, r0. Uh, no, I want h. And then I want the angle theta. I think that's good enough. Let's just say it's launched from with some launch velocity at some height and some angle theta. Now I'll put the colon right there. All the functions and loops start with a, a colon. Everything that's indented, and you see it already puts an indent right down there. Everything that's indented after this is part of that function. So now I just need to do all the same stuff that I have up here but part of the function. So I'm just going to delete, delete, go down here. I'm going to tab this in. That's my gravitational field. I don't need this. I don't need to put V0 because I'm going to pass a V0 value in there, right? So I don't need that. I don't need theta. I'm going to pass that in there. I don't need H. I'm going to pass that in there. But I do need this, R. I do need that V0. Those are going to be the same. I do need T, DT. And now all this stuff is going to be the same. I think. Let's see. I think that should be fine. Now, once it gets done with the loop, I'm not going to print this stuff out. Uh, let's actually leave that there. I'm going to instead do this return. I need to return the values that I want to output. And I could, re let's return the time and R. Okay. So now let me just sh show what happens. Let's let's use the same values I had before. I'm just going to run that program. I'm going to say print p range, and I'm going to use v0 is five, theta h is 2.2. Uh, I'm remembering here theta was 30 times pi divided by 180. Okay, and I'm going to delete this stuff because that doesn't make any sense now. And let's just see what happens. And you'll notice there are multiple things that the function returns. It returns a time, and it returns a vector position. And you notice it's the same as before. Okay. Um, so let's do this. What if I want to just do one of those? Let's say uh, temp range equals this. And now I want to print out, let's say, uh, x equals. How do I get just the second 
part of that output. I want just, it's a list. So this is the item number zero, this is item number one, and so forth. You can have up to, you know, however many items you'd have in there. And so I want the Y component. I want the X component of the second thing. So this is gonna be temp range as a list. So temp range one is, I'll just print that whole thing out. I'll show you. So temp range one is that vector. Okay, and then temp range one dot X is the X component of that vector. There you go. Okay, so we just made a function, but we haven't done anything useful yet. So what I want to do is start with uh, a launch velocity. And let's just go up here, and I'll, I'll just leave that there for a second. And let's say uh, VT is 5. Uh, theta temp, theta T equals uh, 0. Um, and then H equals 2.0, oh, H temp equals 2.2. So you can reuse the variable names even though they're used in here. Uh, I just get scared. I know that GlowScript actually uses, uh, takes the stuff that you write in Python. It's not actually running in Python. It runs in JavaScript. And so there's a translation. And I'm always afraid that it's going to make something weird happen. And I can avoid things, The I can avoid the unknown by just not doing that. Okay. Um, okay. So now what I want to do, let's make a graph. T graph equals graph. I'm going to, I want to plot the range versus the launch angle. So on the horizontal, I'm going to have x title is equal to uh, launch angle. In, and I'll put it in degrees. And then on the vertical axis, I'm going to have range. Y title equals range in meters. And now I need to make a, that just makes the graph. That doesn't make the line. So I'm going to say F1 equals G curve color equals color dot blue. I don't always like blue. It makes it look pretty. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is run this function a whole bunch of different times for different angles. Actually, I need another thing up here. I want to, I need a D theta, D theta T, let's call it. And let's call this uh, one times pi divided by 180. So one degree. So what this means, I'm going to, I want to launch at a certain angle, increase the angle until it gets to something new. I want to keep increasing the angle and rerunning the whole thing. So let's go down here and say while theta t is less than, I guess I could do it to pi over 2. So pi over 2, right, 90 degrees. I don't want to shoot it more than 90 degrees straight up. It's not going to go anywhere. I know that. Okay. Then I'm going to do the following. The first thing I'm going to do is to calculate the range at that particular angle. So I'm going to say uh, temp range equals P range. Now what values am I going to pass it? I'm going to pass it VT. I'm going to pass it uh, the angle. Wait, the height. Is that, i got to get the order right. So it's V0 height and then theta. Okay. So HT is my height. And then theta T. To spell it correctly. That's my, t that's my temporary range. I've calculated it. Now, you don't actually have to s assign that to a variable. But the thing is, if I'm running this and it took a long time to run and I wanted to get the time later, I don't have to go back and rerun it. I just want, I just want to do it once. So now I'm going to plot the x value of my temp range. So I'm going to say f1.plot. I could do this x temp. Let's do this. Equals temp range 1.x. Remember, we did that before. I'm going to delete this stuff up here. Now I'm going to plot that. So I'm going to say f1.plot. Uh, the x value is going to be theta. So it's going to be theta t, actually, times 180 divided by pi. I, I said I wanted it in degrees. And the x value is going to be x temp t. Why did I put t? Whatever. Just be consistent. Now I need to do one more thing. Now I need to increase my value of theta. So theta, theta t equals theta t plus d theta t. All right now I've increased the value of theta and then I'm going to redo the whole thing. I think this should work, but I have a feeling that it might not. I don't know. I just, you know, you get scared when you're running stuff like this. That I'm just doing this on the fly. Bad things can happen. Oh, it worked. Okay, you'll notice some, some dips in here. That's just because my d theta is kind of large and you get this it has to do with both the time scale and the, the theta scale, right? Because it can go below 
uh, the horizontal, but it's good enough here. And you notice I move over here to the highest range and I get it at 30 degrees. Now, let's just check, right? I know the, the maximum range if it starts from a Y equals zero is 45 degrees. Well, I can do that, right? If I go down here and I put HT equals zero, then it's going from level ground to level ground. And I get 45 degrees. So let's fix this up, make it a little bit smoother. The easiest way is come up here in my function. I'm going to put a smaller time step of 0 0.01 and rerun it. Look at that. Right there. And you could print out the maximum if you wanted to have to do a little bit more work. But, I, but the goal here is to show you how you can use a function in Python to do some physics stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. I think that's good. I think that's a good start to functions. Uh, and I will end there. And if you have questions, let me know. I'll talk to you later.